It was a lovely day on uh, Saturday the 7th of October 2006. It was sunny, it was bright, it was warm. And my wife decided that she wanted to go and see a, a flower plant exhibition in Carmarthen. And uh, we decided that we would go there on our motorcycle. It's a big bike, and it's got two massive headlamps on it. Uh, it's a big imposing machine. Um, although it goes quite fast, as you can probably see, I'm not a boy racer. And we were enjoying our trip down the road when we saw a vehicle come up to a junction. And he stopped and we assumed that he was stopping for us. We carried on. We were travelling the speed limit of the time, which I think we were travelling 55 miles an hour on a 60 miles or on road. And he just decided as we went up to him to pull straight out. <laughs> The resulting collision caused me to have extensive injuries. And two years on, I'm still walking with sticks. And unfortunately, I lost my wife at the scene of the accident. And she died there and then. At the roadside, um, I woke up. I presumably had been unconscious for a few moments and I was, I was lying facing the curb. Unfortunately, I was facing away from my wife, so I wasn't aware of what happened. I tried to move, but unfortunately I had, I was later to find out, a massively fractured pelvis. Um, my left leg was all shattered, my right ankle was shattered, my hands were broken. Uh, and I unfortunately I'd also damaged a lot of internal organs. So I couldn't move. Uh, I tried to shout for my wife, but in reality it was probably just a whisper. Then I passed out. Um, the next thing I remember I was... I uh, hear rotor noise from the Aeromed ambulance uh, helicopter and then I passed out again and then I remember waking up at various points, broken points at Witherbush Hospital um, they were doing emergency surgery on me all that day and um, seemingly I was asking for my wife but unbeknown to me she had passed away um, and I wasn't to know that my wife had passed away for quite some time and because of my grief and my anxiety at the time, they put me into a, a medically induced coma for a few days. But every time I would wake up, I would ask about my wife because I, I couldn't remember what had happened. So six times, I think it was, they had to tell me um, how my wife had died. And um, because I went so grief stricken, I back into the morphine and so it went on. Until eventually it sunk in and I was well enough to be able to take it aboard. But we didn't really know until he, he went to court. Um, he was uh, charged with causing death by dangerous driving, uh, driving whilst under the influence of alcohol and driving whilst under the influence of a Class A drug. Um, it's only when the story came out that it became apparent just how bad he actually was. Uh, and to quote from the court itself and from uh, the driver's own observations and comments is that he decided to leave work on the Friday, not have lunch, um, so he hadn't had sleep since the Thursday night. He went to a local bar where he decided to drink an entire bottle of wine by himself. He then did, moved on with some friends to a local nightclub where he downed 12 bottles of, I believe it was Stella beer, which you probably know is quite a strong beer. And at the same time, he decided to take the Class A drug, which affects uh, how your brain works. Um, after that, he went to a private party uh, well into the night, um, where he had absolutely no sleep at all, and he continued to drink, in his own words, four to five cans of cider. Um, in that morning, he was he was driven to his back to his car, and he then, with two other friends, decided to go for uh, to to Oakwood, I believe it was theme park. But they did that via Tesco's, where they picked up more beer, and he was actually found um, drinking at the wheel uh, when the accident occurred. He was breathalysed at the time and found to be well, nearly three times over the legal limit. Of course, he denied it all, 
and the passengers in the car at the court suggested that he was actually fit to drive and they saw no reason why he couldn't drive and that was despite the fact that they both agreed that they themselves were totally unfit to drive. My son Liam, luckily he wasn't on the back of the bike that day. I lost my wife that day and that was a tragedy that's, that's almost beyond bearing every day. But he was only 13. He lost his mum. In fact, he nearly lost his father. If it wasn't for the fact, somehow I survived that. The doctors came out shaking their heads and thinking that I wouldn't survive the night. My family were told that I probably wouldn't survive and they were looking for wills. My son was told that his dad would probably die. He was looking at 13 years of age, at being an orphan. Luckily circumstances were not as bad as, as that, I did survive. But I'm not able to play football with him anymore, I'm not able to run with him anymore, I'm not able to do the things that most parents would do with their kids, simply because I have to walk with sticks or sometimes be in a wheelchair. And the sad thing is, is on that day, somebody was going to die. Unfortunately, it was my wife. There were lots of people there. They knew he hadn't had any sleep and they knew he was drinking. And to be honest, they probably knew he'd had the drugs as well. The people that were in the car with him were obviously knew he'd been drinking. And they, for their own selfish purposes, they obviously wanted to go and have a good time in Oakwood, allowed him to drive the car. Firstly, he'd have to go to his friend's house to pick up the car keys that he'd left there. So they were handed over, another missed opportunity. So my concern is, of course, where was the social responsibility of everybody that he met along the way? 